And after the United Arab Emirates, it's been a very successful week for Thailand. So we've been introduced to the four squads for Thailand. Sam Kukanon, Karampan, Kratapet, Arawan Butpo for the United Arab Emirates, Aisha al Mataiwi, Moza al Siyudi, and Haifel Nakpi. For the United States, Patricia Wallace, Kaya Shol, and Hani Watson. And for Korea, Yusun Huang, Hang Huang Yusun, obviously, Kim Hyung Hui, and Yang J1. So this is the women's team event. Previously, it has been mixed and there is a mixed competition later on in the day after this and the men's team event. And we have referees to select as well. And our referees will be Hisaki Yoshida of Japan, Natalia Sky of Kazakhstan, and Luis Creolete of Brazil. I still have visions of around 20 referees standing around the back by the entrance to the stage just waiting for this to come up and then they uh, get into position and on they come. And our referees are in position and they have their flags and they have their touch pads as well. Well, as we've seen in previous years of this, and this was introduced for the first time at the World Championships in Nur Sultan in 2019. So this wasn't in place at the last Asia Oceania Championships in Kitakishi four years ago. That's a competition which always I think ends up being a, a lot of fun for everybody. 
with that keen edge of competition as well. So the United Arab Emirates will be up first. There is the lifting order, as you can see. And first up for the United Arab Emirates is Aisha al Matewi. who we saw in the women's up to 86 kilo final. A little bit down the order in that. Asian Youth Games silver. It's really worth pointing out that she's only 16 this year. It's, uh, it was an excellent silver medal that she picked up at the Asian Youth Games in December. This is her first major championship. She gets to kick us all off on 50. And worth keeping your eye on the scoreboard all the way through. Because that'll be converted into the score and the team score. As we're uh, dealing with different body weights here. So Aisha al Moeti. And I think we're going to go to the flags early on here to see how she's done and if that's a good lift. It is a good lift. It is two to one in her favour. And Aisha Almieti, 40.22 points. And that is a very, very good start for the United Arab Emirates. Comfortable lift by Amatawi. UAE off to a very, very good start. There is uh, nice support here. I've got to say, there's uh, a full floor and a lot of the stands are full as well. So now, Silva in the total lift in the women's 79 kg final was a tremendous achievement for Huang Yusuf of Korea yesterday. Her first major championship medal finished sixth at the last Asia Oceania Championship, sixth in the World Championships in 2017. That her best World Championship result to date and based in Chengdu. So she's attempting here for 90 kilos. Greetings to all of you watching wherever you are. The United Arab Emirates. Korea, Australia and Thailand are competing in this women's team competition. This is 90. Looking good for Huang and it is good. It's those three white lights and Huang gives Korea a very good foothold in this. It's a score of 78 and a half all told. And that is a strong lead immediately for Korea.
Well, she performed so excellently in the uh, her own decider yesterday at 79 kg. Very good lift at 90. She went as high as 100 yesterday. It was lifetime best across the way for her. How can the United Arab Emirates respond? Al Ziyudi going for 75. Moza Al Ziyudi. Alciudi finished fourth in the women's up to 55 kilo final. Lifted 75 in that and going for 75 here. It was her first round attempt that was successful. The West Asian Games champion from 2019. Four World Championships, four 10th place finishes for Al Ziyudi. This for 75. Obviously they have to aim for a weight that they can get and she has got. That's good news for Musa Al Ziyudi. A good lift coming through at 75 kilos for her. All about registering a mark and making sure that she doesn't miss. And they're into the lead. Korea with one lift in hand. That uh, successful lift of 75 for Al Ziyudi, giving a score of 68.2. They're up to 108 and a half. That was very, very fruitful. Of that, there is no doubt. So Kim Hyung Hui. And her attempt is 95. And if she gets it, this would be a very strong lead established for Korea in this team competition. The bronze medal in the women's up to 67 kg final. Bronze as well in the total competition. A great result for Kim Hyung Hui to Join her previous Asia Oceania and Asian Games bronze medals. Fifth in the Paralympic Games, ninth in the World Championships, both last year. This for 95 for Kim Young Hui. For a strong lead. It is a strong lift. It's a good lift as well. That's important. Great, enthusiastic Korean crowd here. It's pretty much the biggest crowd we've had all week. And it comes for the team competitions on the last day. Kim scoring 90 points and they go up to 168. It's all important on the final lift coming for the UAE because Young has shown her medal winning form here and what's been a very, very fruitful, uh, great medal laden week for Korea. So for Haifa al Nakbi, it gets even more important now as she has to make this lift of 80 kilos.
Al Nakbi lifted as high as 90 in the women's 67 kg final and finished fifth in it. Also finished fifth in terms of the uh, total weight in that. Also an Asia Oceania and Asian Games bronze medalist in her career, sixth in the Paralympic Games in Rio. European Open bronze in Hungary in Eger in 2015. Adel Wesha, her coach. She's uh, medaled at the last two Asian Championships. Bronzes in that, just outside the medals this time, and also bronzes in the last two Asian Games. Silver in the West Asian Games last time out in 2019. So it's kind of like a penalty shootout in a way, with extra scores attached. This, this simple Al Nakbi has to get this, otherwise Korea take the honours in this. There's still a chance for the UAE to uh, outscore Korea here, for Al Nakbi to get this and Korea to miss their final lift. Al Nakbi for 80. Important that this is a good lift. And it is a good lift. Al Nakbi's got that absolutely right. And her UAE teammates in the crowd. Delighted that she's pulled off a really good success. That's what is it, 80. They've had every lift successful. And there's no more that she and her teammates could have done. So that was 68.71 ultimately, and they score 177.22, which is just slightly higher than what Korea have produced from their two lifts so far. But Korea have to get the last one. It may be a strong lead that they're enjoying, but they still have to get the last lift to get the win. And that is, if you like, the beauty of the format. Yang J1. Well, what a time she had of it yesterday. Bronze in the women's up to 86 kilo final. Lifted 110 in that, going for 100 here. Finished fourth in the total lift. If she got the last one, she'd have won silver. She was edged out by 30 kilos by Tawa Tessa Hamdan al Ajaj of Jordan. But it was a great result for Yang. Previously an Asia Oceania bronze medalist. This for 100. And simple as this, if she gets the lift, then Korea go past the UAE. And that is what has happened. Went for a very good mark there, lifts the 100. And Korea progress. A very effective score from Yang Jae-won. She's already medaled here once. And Korea are well on the way. So it is victory for Korea. So next up it is 
Thailand and Australia on stage. We'll work on getting the final score of Korea to you verbally. Australia with Patricia Wallace, Kaya Scholl and Honey Watson coming out. Well, it's been uh, goals on the Oceania side of things for all of this. Australia team who were seeing in this team competition. Samit Bagner, the coach. This is aiming for 65 for Wallace. So in the women's up to 86 kilo final she was uh, first major championship for the Australian champion out of Townsville and Queensland uh, 65 that looks decent and it's a good lift it's 2-1 in her favor the one against was on the press from our center referee but that's all okay for Patricia Wallace that's a really good foundation for Australia Kind of feels like a real shootout this, but obviously every mark has got numbers attached. Sam Kokanoon comes on next after a tremendous championship for Thailand. Fifty-four point seven six scored by Patricia Wallace there, so a moon going here for seventy-five. Bronze in the total competition at 61 kg. She finished fifth in the traditional best lift. The still reigning Southeast Asian champion from five years ago. Those championships are due to be every two years, but have had a bit of a wait. Paralympic silver in 08. World bronze in 2002. Bronze in the last Asian Games. Real high activity uh, backstage in terms of the preparatory lifting. So Som Kukunan going for 75 here. And that's a good lift. Three out of three. For Sam Cook and on. And that has them in a very good, strong position. This is 
is the presenter's paper for the Victory Center today. Great, thank you. Yeah. So you did this paper, right? Yeah, yeah, that's good, thank you. Yeah. So you good? Do you have any questions? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. So 65 and a half for Sam Kukin on there. And a slight lead for Thailand over Australia at the moment, but more to follow. So Kaya Shaw up now who succeeded in the women's 55 kilo final on the Oceania side of things. Ninth at the previous Asia Oceania Championship. Seventh in the open competition in terms of our usual best lift, sixth in the total, but also picked up the Oceania titles. So here she comes at 65, Kaya Scholl, and that's good as well. This is all going according to plan for Australia so far. They're keeping competitive in this. It's a really good lift. Well, she went up to 63 in the 55 kilo final. She missed 65 in the last round, so. That's a brilliant tally, uh, 68.09. The fact that a lot of the competitors here are going to go kind of conservatively in what they've achieved in their own individual final but Kaya Shaw went very high you have to praise her for that Kamal Pan Kraratpet next the bronze medalist in the women's 50 kg final lifted 85 to win the medal actually finished seventh in terms of the uh, total competition she just got the one lift but that's all she needed <laughs> so this for 75 That too is a good lift. Well, we haven't had a single miss yet. Any miss doesn't guarantee elimination. But she's giving a really good appraisal of herself so far. It's the first time that she's been in a continental or regional championships won the Bangkok World Cup last year 15th in the world championships and she's medaled here in Piontek this week so 
69.66 means that Thailand maintain a lead of 12.31 points over Australia. Arawan Butpo is next, gunning for 88 here, which should be worth around 74 points. The Asian Games champion twice over 2010 and 2014. The bronze medalist in the women's 73 kilo final here. And she also won bronze in the total weight category. So by my reckoning, this is worth around 74 points. For 88. But Poe has got it. That's a tremendous lift. Marvellous by Arrow One Butpo. Another success in the book. She started at 96 in her individual competition, went up to 101. Deliberately being quite conservative, obviously, in a lot of the lifting here. But it was worth it. It's always worth going in and getting a lift that you can achieve instead of going really high, gambling and missing it and causing a few problems for your team. 74.01 that was. So there's a lot, a huge amount on this final lift. Which would be a winner for Australia if it is got by Holly Watson here, the Oceania champion and did tremendously well in the open competition too. A bronze in the open here. Oceania gold. Silver in the open total and gold from an Oceania point of view. So by my reckoning, this is worth around 96 points and would send Australia beyond Thailand if she gets it. 125 uh, for Watson in her first regional championships, having debuted at the Worlds last year. Korea getting the better of the UAE and this is a, a big one for Australia at 125. She got that. No. 2 1 against on the press. Didn't get that now. That would have been worth 96. And that is Thailand who get it 209.17 to Australia's 122 would have been had she got it uh, 218 they'd have taken it by nine went up for 125 kilos which she'd got 121 and 126 in her individual final and missed at 131 It's a really strong weight to aim for, just got stuck in the way up, it was only two and against. And that's unfortunate. Thailand got their three lifts, uh, Australia two. 
And there was a definite closeness to the competition. Thailand were leading after the first two lifts anyway. Anon and Kratopet had uh, hoovered up a few more points, 134 compared to Australia's 122 for Wallace and Scholl. They
So the third place contest coming. Which will be the United Arab Emirates against Australia. And here they are. Mutawi, Al Ziyudi, and Al Nakbi for the UAE. Wallace, Shaw, and Watson for Australia. UAE got all of their lifts in the uh, semi-final against Korea but were outscored each time. And take away the decimal points. Al Matawi scored 40, Al Ziyudi 68, Al Nakbi 68. But for Korea, Huang 78, Young 90, Yang 79. Just like in the uh, New total points category, which was presumably inspired by this team competition. It's just takes more to than getting your lifts, but making sure that they'll score significantly as well. And now let's see who the referees are going to be for this. We'll find out eventually, don't worry about that. We also have got the lineup for the final. It is Thailand against Korea. Korea who have had a really tremendous time as the host nation. Huang Yusun, Hyung Hui Kim and Yang Jae-won. Wang Yu Son, Kim Hyung Hui, and Yang Jae Won for Korea. Thailand's trio Sam Kun, Anon, Kamal Pan, Krarat Pet, and Arawan Butpo as they battle subsequently for the gold medal in this women's team competition. Decent team, Thailand. And Korea, likewise. Well, it's gratifying to see a lot of the stands full here, I have to say, in Pyong Tech has been saying all week this actually has been really well advertised here it's been on uh, Korean television as well on SBS and if you're wondering about the significance of them I spent this morning watching the US Open Golf on their network one of the main channels in Korea that's been great uh, just everywhere you go in Pyong Tech and as we've said this week it's a very very long city it's around 40 kilometers minimum maybe 50 west to east and it's been advertised pretty much everywhere so our referees will be Jenny Ortiz 
It'll be Lee Yu Jin and Harris Shakui from Colombia, Korea and Iran respectively. And because there's such a hecticness, the uh, referees are actually sitting in an area to the side of the crowd. And they are coming up on stage from there. They've had the big call up. I sort of had an image of them just all sort of jostling to get into position, but no, it was all very tidy. So here are our matchups. Alicia Almatawi is going to go first with an attempt of 55. Patricia Wallace, 68. First up, Ayusha al Matawi for the UAE, who's going for 50 here. Fifty-five. And by my reckoning, that'll be worth forty-four points. Forty-four and bits. first round of lifts are successful then Australia would have a lead of uh, 10 points early on we'll see here's Al Matewi lift of 55 oh, she got it right in the semi-final but not in the first lift of this bronze medal match Al Matewi denied 2-1 against Well, that's their first miss of the competition. And no joy for Alicia Almatewi. Her uh, major championship debut. But they still have an opening, but they need Australia to miss at least one lift. And uh, I would say actually realistically in terms of what they, the scores they put up in their semi-final, they may well now need Australia to miss two. So no score for the United Arab Emirates. As Patricia Wallace goes now, Got her first attempt in the semi-final of 65. This, she's going for 68 here. And this should be worth Again, around uh, 54 points. That's what she scored last time. That was with uh, a lift of 65. All of this Australian team picking up 
Oceania gold medals. Had to hit the targets, did that. Quite a few Oceania records set across the team as well, women and men. So for 68, Wallace. Must wait, and we may have to wait for the flags. I think that's the direction we're going. It will be the flags, our referees have got them ready. Here we go, and it is 2-1 against. We saw our centre referee and our left referee both going uh, for the red flag, but it was okay from uh, our side referee on the right. So, well, that's a miss a piece. That would have been worth 54 points. Had they both got them, it would have been a, a lead for Australia, 54-44. But it's nil-nil. They've both missed in the first round of the shootout. Only by two and against. And so we are scoreless so far. So Al Ziyudi for the United Arab Emirates. Will be coming up shortly. Kaya Scholl is up next for Australia, who's going for 67. And that should be worth 61 points to give Australia the lead. They were behind after each round against Thailand, but that last lift would have given them the lead, would have given them the win had they got it. So exit uh, stage right and enter stage left for Simon Bergner who's alongside Kaya Scholl here who uh, made a debut at the last Asia Oceania Championships four years ago. Successful in the Wheelchair Basketball League in Australia with the Queensland Comets. Based in Brisbane now, Prethbourne. It's been a very good championships for Australia to be at. And for them and everybody uh, involved in Oceania, uh, powerlifting, para powerlifting has been very welcome to be attached onto and join up with the Asian Championships big event, which has got bigger now for these two editions that Asia and Oceania have been together. Sixty-seven for Kaya Scholl and she's got it. That is a good lift. That is Australia in the lead. Good work by Kaya Scholl. And that is Australia now off and running. It's taken two lifts to do it. Haha, <laughs> very good. Well, she absolutely made sure of that. She lifted 65 in the semi-final, 67 here, so she's gone up a notch. And the two attempts she's had here has exceeded what she achieved in her own individual competition, which is worth pointing out. The lifts were strong enough, had to be strong enough in order for her to pick up the Oceania gold medals. Here are the crowds that we have here to the Right to the stage, or I suppose if you're on the stage, to the left. So this is Moza Alziudi going for 76. So that was worth 70.18 for Kaya Scholl. This should be worth a bit more. Alzi Yudi lifted uh, 75 
in the semi-final this worth 76 which should be worth around 69 points but it's no left and all three going against her in terms of the press Al Ziyudi denied So Australia leads 70 points to nil after that second round of lifts. And the UAE have missed both of theirs. They decided to go up. They probably saw the final tally against Korea. Korea won by 248 to 177. And even though the UAE got all three lifts in their semi-final, each one was exceeded by the Korean equivalent. Haifal Nakbe coming now. Now she got 80 in the semi final and she's going for 80 here as well. And this will be worth 68.71. And they need something on the board here, at least. Going for 80 kilos. Um, It's not looking like that's frankly going to be enough, to be honest. She's a previous Asia Ocean and Asian Games bronze medalist, Al Nakbi. First thing to do is to get this lift and to get it right, to get points on the board, and she has. And that was the important thing at 80 kilos. It's a good lift. Well, it makes them competitive anyway. Al Nakbi, who lifted 85, 88, and 90 in her individual final, 68.71 is what the UAE end up with. Well, that was an important lift to get. Keeps it alive for one more lift. Harley Watson for Australia, going for 125 again. Missed this in the semi-final. And that was the difference between Australia being in this bronze medal match and are seeing them in 10 minutes time. Broke her own Oceania record. In the individual. That was 121 and 126, this 125. This would be worth approximately 96 points. Push through well, and that 
is a good lift and that is Australia with the bronze medal. Two successful lifts to them, one for the United Arab Emirates and that's another medal, another set of medals for the Australian team. Watson gets the big lift in the end, 125. And that's one kilo off her, oh, careful, Oceania record. With a demolition job to follow as well. Uh, bronze will be Australia's. There's not much doubt about that. Well, it's what she wanted to do last time. She's done it here. That's a lift that means an immense amount. Watson's lift there was worth 96 points. Australia scoring 166 to UAE, 68.71. And that final lift on its own obviously would have won for Australia anyway. Into the final for Thailand. Sam Kut Amun. And she's going here for 65, interestingly. And that should be worth around 56 to 57 points. And on who is medaled here. That impressive bronze in the total competition at 61 kg. She is now medalled at every single competition. Uh, the last time she'd won a medal at these championships, 2007, that was a bronze. She'd only competed once since then, which was four years ago, and she finished fourth. So she's always kept the quality up. This to give Thailand a, a solid foundation. At 65, it's interesting she's gone for this because she lifted 75 in the semi-final. We may be going to the flags again. That's the direction. And it is three white flags. And Sam Kukunun gets the lift. And that's a very good start for Thailand. Well, make that around 56, 57 points. We'll see that in the overall scoreboard in a moment. Wang Yuson is coming next, 490. It would be a lift worth 78.56 points, which would be a good solid early lead. Thailand scoring in the high 50s. Wang Yusong. Part of a very, very successful Korean team here. She's contributed to that herself. Silver in the 79 kg final in the total yesterday. 
Lifted up to 100 there. Going for 90 here, which would be worth 78 points, which would be a significant lead immediately. That's a strong attempt and a good lift. Two out of three in her favour. Just the one going against her and that was for the stop sequence from our centre referee. But she scores 78.56 points here does Wang Yusun. And this is all good from her point of view and a successful lift apiece so far. But Korea have a very strong lead of around 20 points. So Korea have the lead on points. We have a mascot invasion going on. Who we've seen a lot of in miniature form this week. It's always good to have a mascot a championship. It's uh, honestly not very often we have one. Remember we had an eagle at the World Championships in Dubai in 2014? That eagle got around the stadium a lot. So Kamal Pan, Kalat Pet going for an attempt here of 65. So 56.77 for Sam Kukanon, indeed. Kerpet now going for 65, which would be worth around 60 points. Korea are leading at the moment, 78.56. So 65 kg for Krad Pet. And that is a good lift. So Thailand in front. But Korea have their second lift to come. Well, she's achieving. It's a good vital lift for Carpet here. The Bangkok World Cup winner last year. 60.37 for her. 117 for Thailand. Not sure that mask has been worn correctly, I'll be honest. Happy days. Kim Hyung Hui will be next for Korea. She lifted 95 last time, going for 95 again here. Running tally 116 to 78 is Thailand's lead over Korea. as you can see on the big screen.
Kim Young Hee aiming for a lift of 95 kilos, which would be worth 90 points. The bronze medalist in the women's 67 kg final. Maintaining a run of successes. She's medaled now in four Asian championships in a row. Coached by Park Gun Young. Lives in Guangzhou. Husband Park Huang Hook. Also a powerlifter of Paralympic Games standard. Competed in 04. So if she gets this, it would be a substantial lead for Korea. And both nations will get their first two lifts. Going for 95 is Kim. And she'll have to wait as we will go to the flags again. And it is three white flags. And Korea get their second score on the board, 168. To 116, they lead Thailand. Thailand need to get their final lift at the very least and hope that Korea missed their last one through Yang J1. But in this battle for gold, it is Korea who've opened up a very, very substantial lead. Arawan Butpo will be next. It's a lift of 80 that she's aiming for. After winning bronze in the women's 73 kg final and in the total competition as well, they need her to score heavily here. Butpo lifted up to 101 in that final, which was absolutely tremendous. She's going for 80 here. She obviously doesn't want to scupper things for the team. This would be worth 67 points, and she has to get it. And the three who've gone in for Thailand here have come in quite conservatively. Australia, for their lifts, all went in quite high in terms of individual abilities and individual personal best definitely worked out in that uh, bronze medal match only missed out on the final lift in the uh, semi-final so Butpo needs this otherwise Korea take the gold and if she gets this then Korea have to come out and win the gold themselves Butpo at 80 this is worth 67 points Solid strong lift and she has got it. That was important. That was very important. Korea have to come out again and win it. 184.42 overall for Thailand. Korea still have to come out and get their final lift for Korea to win. And that's is basically what got Thailand into the final. Australia's last lift would have got them the victory, but it didn't come through and Thailand reached the decider. Thailand have been very strong. And Thailand with a final score here of 184. The interesting thing is they scored uh, 209 in the semi-final. Yang J1 now. Going for 100, this is worth 79 points. And it is worth the gold medal.
bronze in the women's up to 86 kilo final fourth in the total competition they've all medaled this week the Korean team the three who are in this specific Korean team and this to win the gold it is as simple as that they trail by 16 points this would score them 79 they'd win by a good margin have they won by a good margin Yang for a hundred it is a good lift and Korea get the gold it is a home success in this inaugural women's team championship Two hundred and thirty-three they score. Two hundred and forty-eight to a hundred and eighty-four. Korea beat Thailand to win the final, to win the gold medal, and Australia get the bronze, defeating the United Arab Emirates. And no matter what else you've seen, that's how it ends. Korea with the gold. Wang Yusun, Kim Yong Hui, Yang J1. And they went for precisely the same weights as they did in the semi final. So it's precisely the same score as in the semi final 248.56. Thailand. Had 184. They got all three of their lifts as well. And in all three cases, they went for weights lower than they got in the semi final. They'd beaten Australia by a large margin, but Australia only got two of their three lifts. And it's worth reiterating Australia would have won if they'd got their third lift and would have won by a, a decent margin. Thailand, 184. They've scored in the final. Scored 209 in the semi-final. Even that wouldn't have been enough. They'd have had to have added a few kilos for each of their lifters in order to have made it competitive. But Korea got all three of theirs. And Korea win the final. They beat Thailand 248 to 184. So the victory ceremony coming up. It's going to be a very, very full stage. United Arab Emirates finished fourth, beaten in the bronze medal match. Those misses for them in the end were uh, quite costly for the UAE. They scored really heavily, actually, in the semi-final of the UAE. They scored 177. So the victory ceremony led by Congress members Hong Sun Hui and Kang jung -gu.
Park Won Han, the director of the Korea Para Powerlifting Federation. And the mascot, who is Pyong Tae Ki. Those are the two, Park Man Hwan and Pyong Tae Ki. You can work out which is which. Australia with the bronze medals. Patricia Wallace, Kaya Shaw and Honey Watson picking up their bronzes in this team competition. And as is the modern phenomenon, it's probably right as well, the coach will get medal as well. Simon Bergner in there. Pyong Teki is bringing out smaller versions of himself. Been a good fun week, I have to say. It's uh, it's actually really good to have such a big crowd here for the uh, last day. So Thailand, Sam Kukanon, Kamal Pan, Kurt Pet, and Arawan Butpo. Pick up the silver medals beaten in the final by Korea, 248 to 184. Uh, Anon and Butpo having won medals individually. And now in the team competition as well. So Thailand have the silver. And it is victory for Korea. In Korea. Huang Yuseon, Kim Hyung Hui and Yang J1. It continues what has been a really tremendous week for Korea full stop. Tremendous amount of medals overall. Uh, they got each of their lifts in the semi-final and the final. 248 and a half scored in both their matches. And here is the anthem of Korea.
Korea's seventh medal win of these Asia Oceania Championships. And that's in the women, I should point out, only. They've had a, a definite week to remember. Ten medals won overall for Korea to date at these Asia Oceania Open Championships. And what a great success for all of these. Some of those uh, medals for Korea kind of double ups. Quite a few cases, some of the same athletes winning in both the best lift and the total. But that is 10 individual uh, titles one way or another that uh, they've picked up here. And obviously uh, Thailand have had a great run of it as well. These are the scores overall. Korea's margin over Thailand in the final. And Australia picking up the bronze medal there on screen and they're having a very good, successful week. And congratulations to Korea, who've been brilliant hosts. Have to uh, appreciate what they're doing. It's been great to be here. It's been quite a while, actually, since we've had a big uh, event here in Korea in terms of uh, international para power lifting. So if you enjoyed that, of course you did. We've got the men's competition coming up very, very shortly indeed. And we would hope, we would think that that would be immense in its own right. It's coming up shortly.
So the men's team competition at these Asia Oceania.